Welcome everybody, here by an update of uh, Atlas uh, UI 1.1 and basically what it's uh, about, we allow you to easily build beautiful dashboards and basically uh, what we did, we added new page templates and new building blocks for dashboards with charts and more flexible or dynamic uh, overviews and these are mostly based on two new widget sets like the charts, which will be the main topic of this uh, webinar and list view uh, controls so first here, a screenshot of these uh, nice dashboards uh, which are ready to use. So you can use them as an inspiration or um, you're using as a starting point. And when you look at charts, it's also part of uh, the app store. So to publish to the app store, you can also use it in uh, existing uh, projects. You need the uh, Mendix 7 version uh, for it, 7.11 on top of my head. And we had three goals in mind uh, with uh, charts. So the first goal is that we want to make it easy and quickly to build those beautiful charts. So also typically for the web model user or for new users, it should be fairly easy to set up a chart within minutes, basically. On the other end, you also have uh, the demand for creating pixel perfect design. So a UX team designs beautiful charts and you need to be able to reproduce those. So we also wanted to support that. And last but not least, uh, we also want to support many chart types because there's always a chart that, that you also need to support, which is not part of a normal chart library um, and also a variation. And we wanted to support that without coding. And I will go into these three goals and how we solve them uh, now. First bit background, as technology we used uh, Plotly. Uh, Plotly is a very popular library for creating a chart. It supports many chart types, even like 3D types or maps. Um, so a lot of possibilities, a lot of flexibility uh, there. It's also based on D3.js, which is the most uh, popular visualization library. Um, so yeah, we're very happy with this uh, technology. So the first goal, easily and quickly build beautiful charts. So one part is that we provided a, a set with common charts. So the normal charts you would normally uh, use with some simple settings. Uh, to configure your basic needs. So you can select the, the grid, whether you have X axis, I axis, or both. You can select the, the colors, whether you have a legend, some different settings for different types of charts, or automatically refresh. Also we have support for events. So when you click on a data point on a chart, that you can call a microflow and soon also a nanoflow. And also you can create custom tooltips. So you can really show the data you want to show with, by molding a normal uh, page. So I said default uh, simple configuration. Uh, basically what you do, you can add a series. In the series, you select an entity or a microflow. You select the X and the I and the Y, and you can set some settings and you're done, basically. Um, so how do you get your data? I already mentioned it. Basically, you have two ways of providing uh, your data. So from a database, and you can also enter the XPath constraints in the charts or you can use a, a microflow that fetches the data and perhaps even the microflow does some aggregation results and returns non-persistent entities. Another nice and can be very useful solution is uh, by using uh, the OQL connector module. It's created by Arjen Lammers and then you can use OQL to map OQL statements to non-persistent entities and show these in your charts. And I'll also show an example uh, now. Um, so first, the demo configuration is showed in the web modeler to see the, the settings and how it is for uh, a more of a citizen uh, developer. So here you see the charts. Also with the preview in the web modeler, it generates uh, random uh, data to show a preview. And here you can, uh, this is a time series chart. This is a bar chart. And what you see here on the right, you see the properties. So you can say grouped or stacked. Stacked is only applicable when you have multiple series. When you have a series, you can just change the settings. You can give it a name, so which also is shown in the legend. You select the entity, you select the source. You can select uh, the XPath constraint in the desktop modeler. You select your uh, X, your Y, and uh, your sort order of your the XS, X axis, and basically you're good to go. There's some other settings uh, you can uh, do, so to change uh, the color to make it uh, really easy. Here you can uh, select the uh, events once, what happens when you click on a bar, for example. Um, 
small sure it should update the color. Um, nevertheless, um, other here we have a line chart here. So same type of a chart, same type of a configuration. What I used here is use a microflow as a data source and also used here the, the module from uh, Arjen Lammers where I basically executed uh, a SQL statement, which uh, I will show you here and click on it. Basically what this does, it does aggregate the amount of uh, tasks created uh, per day and then show that in a, in a line chart. So it's not the perfect way to work with OQL, but um, yeah, it can be very useful in uh, projects when you need to aggregate it and it can be easier than using a, a microflow. So it's more as an inspiration on the different types. How can you um, yeah, get your data? So some other settings I will show you. So you can say whether the legend should be shown or not, uh, the grid, horizontal and vertical, or only horizontal, for example. Um, you can say the sizing, so you can do the sizing relative to the wife or to the parent, etc. So many types of options uh, makes it easy to uh, to use it. Then we also talked about highly customizable for pixel perfect designs. So here you see some examples of some uh, different style charts, whether you find them ugly or not, at least they're different than you're normally used to. And how we did it is by, um, because all the plotting charts are based on a JSON configuration, and we created a runtime editor in which you can live edit your settings and immediately see the result. And it's done on a CSS-like approach. And yeah, this allows you to easily customize your charts and then you need to copy these settings also to your desktop modeler. Um, one example I really like that is built with these charts. So this is definitely not a standard chart. Uh, Andres built this for Animal Shine and uh, it's very cool to see that we can now build charts like uh, these. Here you see a screenshot or animated GIF of how you can do the custom uh, configuration. I will show that also uh, live uh, later. Um, and once you change the configuration in the live preview, you can copy that here in the widget that's only available in the desktop model because it's more of an advanced uh, feature. And also when you look at the widget, there are different modes there. So you have basic, that's what you see in the web modeler. You can have advanced, then it also uses your advanced uh, configuration settings. So the JSON, and you have the developer option. And once you select that, then you get uh, the additional button on the chart that, can, uh, that will open the runtime editor for the live uh, preview. And I will show that um, now. So here you see different uh, charts in the runtime. And here this chart on the top right has the developer mode enabled. And here you see the toggle editor. And once I open it, you see it here. And then you see the chart highlighted. You see the settings that are currently applied and you can now easily change that. So for example, I want to change something of the font. You can now easily copy it or you can get the example configuration from Polotly. There's a link here on the top right, which uh, directs you to uh, to Plotly, where you can see all the configuration options uh, that are there. So for example, I want to have a different color, I want to change the size. So now you can immediately um, see the results of what you did. Another example, uh, this is for the normal layout. Another example is that you can also, per series, you can change uh, the settings. So for example, you have a bar chart and you also want to show a line chart. So we don't have the combined. Uh, chart, but then you could also say, okay, let's uh, change uh, the type to uh, line and it will create a line chart for you. So this would be an option to combine a bar chart and a line chart without doing um, difficult stuff. So once you've done this, you need to copy this to the desktop modeler. Here have the column chart. As you can see here, I put it on developer and I could copy and paste the settings here and then they are uh, maintained uh, for the widgets. So the widget has default settings and with the JSON configuration, you can extend the, the, default, the default settings for pixel perfect uh, design. Then last but not least, uh, the any chart. That's um, basically we wanted to support many types of charts and also very dynamic charts. 
without having to code. And we also wanted to keep the default chart simple. So what we did is created the any chart, and basically what uh, how that works, it receives JSON configuration as input, and based on the JSON configuration, it um, that generates a chart. It's a bit more difficult, of course, because you need to generate uh, the JSON, but it's also very powerful. And yeah, we tried it with a couple of charts, and it's uh, pretty doable. It's way faster than coding. If you know REST web services, you're also able to do this. On the right, you see also some examples of charts you can create, like a 3D chart, map charts. So there are a lot of possibilities here without coding uh, to build. Um, please note that it's available as a separate module in the App Store. That's so not part of uh, Atlas UI because it's really more of the advanced uh, stuff here. Uh, but we have uh, the module plus the widget in the App Store, which also contains uh, building blocks with examples of charts that you can uh, use, also with example data already in there, so you can easily uh, select the data, basically, which as you would normally do with a REST service, put it in a JSON structure, and create a mapping, and then fill that data, which I will now also show you in the in the modeler and first in the runtime. So here you see a couple of uh, different types of charts. So here you see a 3D chart. You can even spin it and turn it and zoom it. See, so very cool stuff. Others are candlestick charts, which you can also uh, change and change the time view you want to, to view it in. And what I did below was created the chart. This is very default styling, plotly uh, styling, so not Mendix styling. And what it has, this has a dynamic set of series. So basically, um, for every project, it will create a line on the chart. And I created this with uh, the any chart. And I can now show you how we did it. So basically, here you have the page, you have the any chart. If, uh, if you look at, for example, the 3D chart, you see uh, some data of it which you can then use to copy and paste it uh, to a JSON structure. I will show a more simple one. So in the App Store modules, you have the any chart. So if I want to create like a custom line chart, I will just drag and drop it onto my page. So this will immediately show default uh, line chart. And here I see the JSON that is used for this line chart. And this JSON, I can then use to create a JSON structure and then use that mapping and uh, created a main model for this uh, chart. So basically, you're doing the same as with the REST uh, service. And let me show you how this would look like. So here, this is the microflow that will create the data for the any chart. So we have a project list, and it creates, um, for every project, it will create a new line, create an X and a Y, and uh, the values, export it to JSON, um, put it into an attribute, and basically show the attribute in the chart. So you get a domain model uh, like this, uh, for example. So I would definitely try you know, to build your own chart uh, with this, use one of the building blocks, copy and paste it into JSON structure, do the mapping, and uh, yeah, build your own uh, fancy chart. Some other thing I also wanted to quickly mention are the list view controls. And with the list view controls, we basically wanted to make it easy to create more flexible overviews or lists or grids, whereas now the list view, template grid, and data grid are all very uh, are limited, especially the data grid and how you can design it. So we wanted to make that more flexible and also learn for what we call repeater, which is basically the next generation for building these overviews to create a more flexible data grid. And we with the list view controls, you can also do this with the list view. So basically, it's a set of widgets which you can combine with the list view to create a, a nicer overview. So there's a text box search where you can search for one or multiple attributes. There's a drop-down filter which you can use to filter the list or a checkbox. Uh, drop-down sort, you can sort based on the settings, different pagination options and also a widget that acts like a header, so you can create more of a tabular kind of uh, view. So here you see some examples. Top left, how it will show in the runtime. Bottom left, 
how it will show in the web modeler. And uh, on the right, you see how it looks in the desktop modeler. So basically a way more flexible approach of uh, creating your overviews. So it allows, for example, to create like a tabular structure that also contains buttons in the, in the rows. Here, another example that shows priority based on, uh, yeah, task based on priority and shows a different batch. Uh, so here, based on uh, for every project I have tasks, and based on the project, it updates the task and it shows you the the priority nicely. It has a uh, paging uh, options. Uh, also, you can customize the whole paging how you want to uh, look like. So you can also add like um, previous page, next page uh, button, or filter on it uh, easily. So multiple, uh, yeah, really flexible in how you want to show your data. And this is how it looks like in the modeler. So you have your list view. Basically what you do, you add the widget, you select the same entity as the widget list view has, and you configure the options and you're uh, good to go. 